The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Many years ago, Winston Churchill said this. Truth is the most valuable thing on earth. So valuable that oftentimes it is protected by a body gas of lies truth is the most valuable thing on earth so valuable that oftentimes it is protected by a bodyguard of lies truth is like the tongue it is so sharp that God has protected it with some giants, the teeth. But the tongue can change your whole big body, can direct it as to where it should go. Truth is the most valuable thing on earth. Sakharov, the one who gave the Soviet Union the, the atomic bomb, just before he died, he made this statement. I always thought that the most powerful weapon in the world is the atomic bomb. But I've changed my mind. The most powerful weapon is not the atomic bomb, but the truth. Sakharov. What is truth? The answer to this question is in John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The issue is not so much about the interrogation of what truth is, but who will be the embodiment of the truth? Who will live out the truth? Truth has fallen in the streets. And when God saw that no one was being just, no one was righteous, he devised a plan. Jeremiah 33, 15 says this. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. For this is what the Lord says, David will never fail to have a man to sit on the throne of Israel. But sadly, truth according to Isaiah 59 has fallen in the streets. So there are no values, there are no absolutes any longer. Everything is relative. It depends on you and your interpretation. When you steal and you are caught, that is your problem. When you steal and you are not caught, the world will define that as being smart. Truth has fallen in the streets. Isaiah chapter 59, I'll read from the NLT, New Living Translation, Isaiah 59. Our cause opposed the the righteous, and justice is nowhere to be found. Truth stumbles in the street, the King James will say, has fallen in the street. And honesty 
has been outlawed. Yes, truth is gone. And anyone who renounces evil is attacked. The Lord looked and was displeased to find there was no justice. He was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed. So he himself stepped in to save them with a strong arm and his justice sustained him. Truth has fallen in the streets. Truth does not matter in the cultural setting arena. Truth, in fact, does not matter in the political arena at all. It is no longer appreciated in the law courts. No, truth is not appreciated. This lawyer knows very well that the clients he's standing for, he has a bad case and that he is guilty. As he listens to him, he knows he is guilty. But he looks at him and says, okay, let's go. Let's go and try. It all depends on argument. It is not about truth any longer. People who are supposed to be in prison, they are walking free. When they carry them shoulder high and they were saying acquainted and discharged, they themselves, they knew by the lamp in their spirit that they did the killing. Not that man. Truth has fallen in the streets. It is not appreciated in the schools any longer. Truth cannot be found in the hospital arena. No. I'll bring out a couple of scripture verses to prove this point. In John chapter 18, verse 37 and 38, Jesus was arraigned before Pilate and he asked him a question and he, 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 he replied, Jesus replied and then he retorted with a question. That is Pilate retorted with a question. John 18 from verse 37. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king? You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Now please listen to me. All those of us who are followers of Jesus, the reason you are born again cannot be different from the reason for which Christ came. He came to witness and to testify about the truth. You cannot have any agenda beside this one. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Verse 38. What is truth? Retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews, gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. That is a typical politician. He says, what is truth? He was not interrogating for the nature and the character of truth. He was not asking Jesus to tell him what truth is. Because the Bible says he retorted. Retorted simply means that the reply was witty. This is not what I want to hear. What is truth? And he left him. But when he went to the other side, in his spirit, he knew what truth was. And then he told them that, I don't find any fault. But the man that he doesn't find any fault with, he stands before him and says, what is truth? I don't want to hear that. Anyone that is born of the flesh is flesh. So if Pilate is doing it, you are born of the spirit. You can't do the same. No, we are not like them. What is truth? I'll come back to this Pilate's question, what is truth? But Matthew brings a certain dimension to what happened in John chapter 18. Matthew 27 from 24. Matthew 27 from 24. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, 
but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water, washed his hands in front of the crowd. I'm innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. Now, he knows the truth. He knows what to do. But a politician, he wants to please the people. Bring me a bowl of water. And in their culture, washing their hands means that, no, I don't have anything to do. But you see, it is a shame. Even children yet unborn, they know that Pilate killed Jesus. They know. He washes his hands. He washes his hands. The wife is telling him, be careful of this man. He is innocent. But he looks at the people. If this uproar continues, I will lose my job. I don't want to lose my job. Then let me please the people. Let me take the murder line. Let me be very relative. He washes his hands and off he goes. He said, it is your responsibility. But it is never their responsibility. Because he had the power to release him. Truth. Matthew 28, verse 12. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, the chief priest, not the chief anybody, the chief priest himself, he met with the soldiers and they devised a plan. They gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If it ended there, I would not have had too much of a problem. But let's continue. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. It sounds so much like an African politician. I know what I will do. Yeah. If this matter gets to the governor, don't worry. We know what you, we will satisfy him and get you out of trouble. We are trying to build some cells to decongest prisons. I was at Adria recently to meet some of the inmates. I looked at them, these young men. If you look at their faces, they, they are not children of the rich. No rich man's son will be in prison. No. Because he knows how to satisfy the system and get the children out of. These are boys who have stolen cassava, goats, and they are there. Because their parents are poor. Because there is no legislation. There is no one to be the advocate. Truth has fallen in the streets. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. If it suffers loss, it means that those of us who are building the church in this generation, we love our skins more than the cross. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day that his body was stolen. Look at another one in Acts chapter 24, verse 22 onwards to 27, please. Then Felix, who was well acquainted with the way, I joined the proceedings. Now, this is a governor well acquainted with the way. When it is capital W, it only means that he knows Christianity well. When last year, last year's, the commander comes, he said, I will decide your case. He ordered the centurion to keep Paul under guard, but to give him some freedom and permit his friends to take care of his needs. Several days later, Phyllis came with his wife, Drauscelia, who was Jewish. He sent for Paul and listened 
to him as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. Because Felix, he understood the way. As Paul talked about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Phyllis was afraid and said, that's enough for now. You may leave. Go away. You prisoner. When I find it convenient, I will send for you. If it ended there, I wouldn't have had any problem. But listen to what is going to follow. At the same time, he was hoping that Paul would offer him a bribe. When you are reading the Bible, open your eyes. Yeah. All these things are in the Bible. You see, the man says, oh, go. He is acquainted with the way. How many judges are not found in our churches? How many lawyers are not found in our churches? Say, go and come, go and come. This thing has been done. It is just a repetition. There is nothing new under the earth. Yeah. At the same time, he was hoping that Paul would offer him a bribe. So he sent for him frequently and talked with him. When two years had passed, two years, he is not giving bribes, so he's not judging the case. Two years. Now look at what happened. When two years had passed, Phyllis was succeeded by another person, Portius Festus. But because Phyllis wanted to grant a favor to the Jews, he left Paul in prison. He left him in prison. Let's go back to Pilate's question. John chapter 18. Verse 38. What is truth? The answer to this question is in John 14 verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now look at it. The question Pilate asks was, what is truth? But Jesus has said it somewhere that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So what, if you put these two verses together and look closely at it, what Jesus is trying to say in John 14 is that it's not so much about what is truth that is a problem. People know the truth. But who? To be the embodiment of the truth is a challenge. But I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, truth is the way. Truth is a life. And the life is the truth. And the way is the truth. That is what Jesus is trying to say. Truth is the soul of every nation. It is the way that every nation should tread. If you take truth away, there will be confusion. There will be no righteousness. Truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Young men are looking for authentic people. People who carry themselves in truth. But they are scarce. But I want you to be on the side of Jesus. And show yourself up as one who is on his side. Truth has fallen in the streets, but God will not just...